humility. And self-confidence both. Both both are combined in that. I'm okay with it. It's all right to be not as good. It's okay. I'm comfortable with that. And so loneliness is much harder with that. I'm accepting of that. And I'm happy for others if they can do something better. Well, why would I be happy for others? Because they, something very important comes in there. Our understanding that no matter what quality I possess, I'm not stuck with that. Newer scientists describes it as, what's the word, I forget now. Help me. Neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity, that's the, the, the neuroscientific kind of word that they use. In Buddhism, you don't have that word. You talk about the plasticity of the mind. The mind can change. The mind can change in so many different ways if you just apply the right kind of causes and conditions. So we have a bit of a problem in the West. We've taken modern psychology to an extreme. In the sense that we sometimes get stuck in the past. Oh, I've been messed up by my mom and dad. Hopeless case. We kind of get stuck in that. As in like, I'm not saying that we shouldn't look at the causes for why we have an issue, possibly maybe, you know, we feel insecure because my mom was insecure. Or my mom, she never, you know, she didn't praise me enough. All that is true. I mean, I totally agree. But you're not really stuck in that. Only if you think you're stuck in it, that's when you're stuck in it. Because the first step is to recognize that and then to work on making changes, because we can, we can. It's just for some people it takes a little longer, and for some people it takes, uh, it goes quicker. But in the end, with some habituation, with some change of attitude, as in like applying certain methods, that maybe previously we didn't apply, sooner or later it's going to change. So that's the beauty of our mind. It can change. A lot of habits we have, they're habits because we habituated with them. So the same mechanism in terms of looking down on ourselves, feeling bad about ourselves, we created a habit at some point. When we were kids or when we were a teenager, I don't know when, that same mechanism can be replaced by something different. So that's the beauty, there's so much freedom. So much freedom in that. And humility is actually, these, these qualities such as humility and self-confidence, they give us more freedom. Humility in particular, at this day and age, the me first thinking, we're very restricted by that. And the competitiveness, right? The competitiveness, it's like, a, Wow, it's like there's not much freedom. Competitiveness arises, competitiveness arises, and I, right? Kind of being super ambitious or competitive or jealous. And then we have to work so hard. There's just not much freedom. There's a lot of stress, stress involved. Like the absence of humility, wanting to be just like that. I mean, wanting to be like that, there's one way of looking at it. Yeah, I wanted to be like that. That would be nice. I can do it. I try and give my best, okay, but this kind of like, I need to, uh, where the self-centeredness again comes in and it pulls us, there's no real freedom. Does that make sense? Oh, it's okay. It's okay to be second. Oh, it's okay to be last. <laughs> right? So what? I'm good at other things. All right. So, actually, from everything I've said so far, so the center is really the, the center as in like the, 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 the root kind of, or the main kind of cause here is our self-centeredness. Sense of the I being a little bit more important and that gives rise to a lot of problems and removing such as, as I just said, lack of humility, arrogance, worry, loneliness, so hypersensitivity, um, what else? Anything else? I've forgotten. Anything else? A lot of pressure. Stress. A lot of stress. Stress. Anything else you can come up with? No? Covered it? Fear. Pardon? Fear. Fear. Anxiety. Worry. Fear. Yeah, very strong. Yes. 
That's on one pattern. Did anyone see? No. Okay. So that's on one hand, and then humility, etc. So, all right. If we cannot change those states of mind, I think we should not talk about them. We should just ignore them, right? If we can't change it, what's the point discussing it? But of course, there are means to reduce the self-centered attitude and to replace it with self-confidence, to replace it with humility, and actually have more freedom, inner freedom, mental freedom. Okay? So, how can we go about this? How can we go about doing something about self-centeredness? Now, from a Buddhist point of view, it's actually really difficult to totally eradicate that self-centeredness. And I don't want to go into this because we don't have enough time. So to tackle the actual, actual root cause of self-centeredness, oh, it's hard, it's difficult. And it takes time to get there. But in the meantime, there's no reason why we shouldn't tackle self-centeredness itself. Like why we should, we, we can of course, okay, I'll tell you what it is, most of you already know this, but um, basically the, 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 the root cause of our self-centered attitudes of considering the I to be more important is a misapprehension of how the I exists. It's as simple as that. It's a basic misapprehension, a wrong way of looking at the I, making it more solid, more concrete, than it actually is. Of course it is. It is. It exists. The I exists. Don't get me wrong. The self exists. There is an I. But the way I perceive of myself as I, and the way I perceive of you guys, does not exactly exist. It's, it's non-existent. It's an exaggeration of what is there. I add too much. I exaggerate. I add too much. All right. So that's our basic problem. From a Buddhist point of view, that's our basic problem. All right, but that is difficult to understand how the self actually does not exist. And for this course here, for this course, for this uh, hour that we are together here, it's not necessary to talk about it. So I want to address this. Because there are means and methods that are much faster to deal with the self-centeredness, with this egotistical mind, however weak it may be. In some of your case, in some of your cases, it may not be that strong, but still, it's totally worthwhile to recognize it, to get to know it, and to differentiate it from other states of mind, and to work more on the other those other states of mind, such as self-care, humility, self-confidence, high lowest, uh, high self-esteem, <laughs> and so forth. Right. So, to differentiate between the two, and well, apply the antidotes to it, reduce it, and have more freedom. Have more freedom. So Buddhism talks a lot about freedom, but it's not about an external freedom, but rather an internal freedom. Freedom from the pull of this mind, that when it's there, ooh, our freedom is gone, and it makes us do things that actually harm us, harm ourselves and others. So what are methods? What are the methods to dealing with this self-centeredness? Thinking my happiness is more important. Well, first of all, recognizing it. So you have states of mind such as mindfulness and introspection. Introspection fast, kind of looking inside. What is going on in my own mind? There's this whole world, my own mind. There's this whole, when I say world, this whole jungle of different minds that arise so quickly, I'm not even aware of them. I think what is in modern psychology is often referred to as subconsciousness. It's just another way of saying, there's so much going on, I don't know what's really going on. It's like you catch a, a glimpse here and there of, a, of an awareness that has just arisen, if it's really strong anger, for instance. But we're not really aware of what's happening on like a moment-to-moment -moment level. So introspection is a good way, is a good method to recognize it. It's just introspection is just another word of another word for saying looking, 
looking not outwardly. We're very good at that. Very good at that. What's on the menu? What's going on around us? What's for sale? Uh, right? What, what's, what's on the movie? What movie comes tonight? What's on Netflix? Is there Netflix then? <laughs> right? What does Amazon offer? Whatever. Right? We're very good at looking outwardly, very good at comparing and checking out. Right? Gosh, like the sale. Very quickly. We're very good at that. I mean, we have this ability. Now, that same ability, differentiating, discerning between, oh, these are the trousers I like, this is my size, oh, there's only one left, let's quickly get one. Oh, the car. Like, you know, like we're very good at that. And a lot of people kind of we're in competition with, so we're good at being quick. So that ability now we use with the same kind of enthusiasm. We look, we take that, and we kind of look inside. Wow, the jungle, the shopping mall of our own mind, <laughs> the offer, the stuff that I neglect, ignore, the stuff that is wonderful. So to look inwardly, like to look inside, that's the first step. Because whatever I tell you right now, it all sounds really nice, but so what? So what? I use a lot of words, I use ideas. Unless we look inside and go, ah, oh, yeah, that is my own self-centeredness. Oh, how interesting. Or, oh, this is my own humility. Oh, I had a moment of humility. Great, I need to work on that one. So unless we do that, no way we can make any changes. So it's this kind of looking inside, like looking, turning our attention to the inside, our, our own mind. And so mindfulness is another um, awareness or another type of mind that we utilize here in order to be able to do that. So looking inside and staying focused, staying mindful of what's going on. And oftentimes when we hear mindfulness is about being in the present, well, yeah, that's part of it. Sometimes just watching what is going on in my mind, what is going on in my body. But you can also take a scenario of like before, like you, I don't know, you just have that wild morning, right? A wild morning, you're totally stressed out. Like you need to have a shower, you're so sweaty from all the stress and your interaction with other people and there was anger and there was frustration and there was resentment and there was self-hatred and wow, gosh, this is like a whole supermarket full of stuff that you can now look at. So to actually sit down with a sense of curiosity and acceptance, right, not to be kind of, not to identify with these are just different states of mind. These are your mind. So that implies you are not those awarenesses. They're just different types of awareness. So the same way you would look at your body when you're in pain, you'd be like, oh, what is it? What's this, this, this. And you don't totally identify with that. In the same way, you just look at your mind. And it's so interesting. It's so interesting, the mechanism of your own mind. It totally makes sense how you get from A to Z. So, then you, you watch what happened this morning. What gave rise to it? What gave rise to each of those stages? Okay. How did it feel about it? And so sometimes people are a little bit scared of their own feelings, right? This, ooh, that made me feel, ooh, ooh. But in the end, it's just a non-physical kind of entity. It's just an experience. It's just an emotion that seems so solid when it's there, but it actually just comes and goes. So it's a bit like when you're in like in a, when you have a foggy cloud, you know, emotions are like foggy clouds. So instead of stepping into the cloud, you kind of mentally step a little bit away, get a bit of a sense of objectivity, and just watch the cloud, that emotion, when it's there, just kind of take a step backwards and just recognize it, just watch it. And your fear will disappear because you're not stepping inside of it. Right? And so basically what you're trying to do is becoming aware. What happened? Where did I get from here to here? And try and make an effort. Was there a moment I felt I'm just a little bit more important? I'm just a little bit more, right? Okay. See whether you can actually recognize that. How did that feel in that moment? 
what was that sense of like, yes, me, a little bit more important? Was there self-confidence in that moment or humility? Probably not. Self-loathing? Ah, more likely. Self-loathing. Like I said before, when there is a sense, I'm just a little bit more important, I'm just a little bit, my happiness is a little bit more important, right? In that moment, that, when that moment arises, then a sense of self-loathing may arise. Why? Because me being better, me being good, is a little bit more important than other people. And if I fail, it's worse. Others can fail. I'm okay with that. Right? But I myself, no. So I'm much more likely to be unforgiving about my own shortcomings than I am with other people. Because I don't think their shortcomings are as important because I don't think they, their, their, their good qualities are as important. So you actually catch yourself, you catch that mind. And the way I deal with it, I deal with it with humor. Gotcha. Found you. Ah, there you are again. That mind is so funny. It's so funny, actually. It's so funny because even when you try to do that, mindfulness, it kind of comes in. So actually, the way I'm dressed, the way my hair cut, you can tell what my main job is. So this is actually supposed to be our main job to kind of look inwardly, okay, main job. So there's some religious aspects there too, but they're all assisting that effort and getting to know our own mind, getting to know the types of mind that harm us, reduce them and replace them with other types of mind. That's all Buddhism is about, basically. And then there's a lot of room. Hmm. <laughs> um, and, you know, less hair, etc. Um, but which makes all that process actually easier. I don't want to go into details on why, but the point is that's our main job. And what is so funny is that the self-centered mind is very good at creeping in at all times. Right? So it's first just about recognizing it. In fact, when you first start off with it, the self-centered mind becomes a little stronger. It becomes a little stronger. It's like taking homeopathic medicine and the symptoms get stronger or when you exercise to overcome a certain pain the pain may get a little stronger initially and then it sneaks in all the time so this is where the fun comes in to recognize it right oh I've just been very mindful am I, am I not special ain't I special right there it is and the thing that you also do and that's also very important you utilize the self-centered mind actually for your benefit. I've already done that with you guys. I told you, it, it makes you suffer and you feel better if you have positive states of mind. So actually, I'm feeding into your natural sense, oh, I need to be happy, I want to be happy, my happiness is really important, right? Which is actually a little bit more extreme than self-care. Right? At times it's there. I'm not saying it's there all the time, but at times it's there. And this is the first step which the Dalai Lama describes as being wisely selfish. Right now we're stupidly selfish. Right? Our self-centered energy is we want to be so happy and want this, that, and the other. But we constantly do things that actually destroy this happiness. We harm others. We have others thinking, oh, if I'm just a little bit, take a little bit more for myself and neglect their happiness, I'll get what I actually want. But that, unfortunately, doesn't work. It just doesn't work. It doesn't work because we're all connected. And if we're all connected, what I give out comes back to me. What goes around, comes around. So if I give out certain things, <laughs> suffering, eventually it comes back to me. So sooner or later, what I've given to others with the intention to be happy myself. Actually, I experienced that. So, basically cut myself on my, shoot, my, shoot myself in, into my foot. That's really what I've done. Okay. So, therefore, the way Buddhist psychology kind of works is use your self-cherishing mind. Use that mind, recognize it, but don't ignore it. Do not, please, do not 
suppress it. If you suppress it, it comes back three times stronger. No, no, it's not about suppressing it. Using it for your own benefit. Understanding if I really want to be happy, if I want to be relaxed and less stressed out and not lonely, then I need to work on working more for the benefit of others, for the happiness of others. Not just focusing on my own, but also on that of others. Okay. We are very good at working for the happiness of others, but spend some hours a day working for the... And if I feel better, if I feel better, then I'm motivated to do more of that. Right? So, you work with it. You work with this type of mind. And then you recognize how it sneaks in. It will sneak in. We're very used to it. We're very used to it. Having the sense I am the center of the universe. And it takes time. But there is a lot of logic. There's a lot of there's a lot of reasoning. There's a lot of reasoning that supports the reduction of considering my happiness to be more important. So usually, if you think, when we talk to someone, what is in the back of my mind? What is in the back of my mind when I talk to another person? I hope they like me. I hope they think I'm special. Or I hope they recognize my good qualities. Or I hope, right? It's kind of like always a little bit in the back of our mind. So, here, the idea would be to become mindful enough, like when we talk to another person, what is my actual attitude when I talk to this person? Do I really want to understand this person? Am I fully listening? Am I actually fully listening? And when we are really listening, then the divide between myself and this other person, it diminishes. The sense of they're over there and I'm here, it kind of diminishes. So your self-centered mind cannot sneak in because the self-centered mind, what it does, it does not allow us to see a situation from another person's point of view. Remember I said narrow-mindedness. It's kind of like my perspective, but not the other person's perspective. And I also previously said with regard to self-centeredness that it relates to self-control. So scientists, they have found a neuroscientist, they have found when you train yourself in self-control, which is basically self-control is um, 